Hi, everybody. This is a wee bit of alchemy. Welcome. Tonight, we're going to explore the deeper some of the things we've been talking about with central equilibrium. And, uh, and it came up actually in a conversation a few days ago, another meeting we had, and uh, some people talked about, you know, what's the best place to start the Taiji form with the heels together with the toes, you know, with the feet parallel. And what I um, want to play with is the idea that it doesn't matter what we can, we can find that Zhong Ding wherever we are. And I want to explore a number of different stances and also the transition between them and really highlight the idea of maintaining not just maintaining, but being able to find again and again and again, central equilibrium in each of these situations. So just to re review here, the idea of central equilibrium is that there is a sweet spot in your posture where the muscular contractions, the muscular resistance, is reduced to a minimum for that moment. And you align yourself with the energies of the earth and the sky in such a way as to be able to plug into the big chi. And when you do that, something happens, magic happens. Then we allow ourselves an, the possibility of opening to effortless power where if we can take that energy and direct it through the body, which we call Jin, then we are able to then um, create very profound effects in, uh, in our, our physical expression. So something very insubstantial, that is your connection with the earth and sky, which is as, as woo-woo as it gets. And we take that very woo-woo thing, that very insubstantial thing, and we use it to create very substantial effects. And these are things that, you know, I've tested thousands of times with people, and it's uh, a remarkable in its effect. And more, even more important than the ability, say, to knock someone over or not be knocked over yourself, which is very helpful for if you're a Taiji player, more important than that is the, the fact that you are aligning in such a way as you are amplifying your personal chi, your personal energy. And you are not just amplifying it, but you're constantly restoring, replenishing, cleansing your energy. And you're, it allows you to feel not just intellectually, but actually experientially part of something much, much bigger than you. So the uh, when that happens, then you're able to access abilities that are not present in our conventional way of, of holding our body. And some of the stuff is counterintuitive and um, we've covered a lot in these earlier sessions here. And I'll, you know, for the benefit of those who might just be tuning in to these, these sessions, I'll, I'll cover some of, the, some of the things again and, and speak um, uh, to break, break down some of these things in, in very uh, elemental ways uh, so that you can really tap into that. And it, it benefits each of us to be able to approach this as if it's the first time. I know I do. Anytime I get ready to do a, a say a Tai Chi form, it's the first time I go in there and I'm looking for that sweet spot as if I've never been there before. And I know it's in there somewhere. And I know that each time I go there, it's different. And not only that, but whenever I shift from one posture to another, it's a brand new moment and I have to find it again. And Therein is the fun. It's also the opportunity to create something really quite magical. 
So let's play around with this a little bit. And we're going to explore a number of different stances. And by a stance I refer to, what I'm talking about is, is the way that your feet and legs are, are um, connected with the earth and the, the position they're in. And I differentiate between a stance and a posture because a posture includes the whole body. So the stances are, you know, we're, we're breaking it down quite a bit here and, and saying, okay, I go into this stance and that is, in the stance, there are a number of mysteries that you can uh, explore and can only explore for yourself. You know, you can get an idea that, uh, that there is something more there, but unless you go there, it's, it's just up here. It's, not, it's not, not inside. And we want to be able to get it so that we we're able to do these things instantly. So there, it doesn't have to go through a process of rationally analyzing the situation and breaking it down and creating the, the wheel each time we, we try to go into a posture. We want to have, you know, be able to adopt a stance in a way that, oh, I know this place. And, and the paradox there is even though I know this place, it's brand new. So that's, that's the fun of it. Okay, so let's, uh, why don't you stand up? And so the first thing we wanna do is just get the three pillars in. And the reason why I say that is that everything starts with that. These are the, these are the foundations that if you do not do these things, if you do not, activate these, these three things, you're probably not gonna get anywhere near the benefit from whatever practice you're doing as you might if you do implement them. So I spent 40 years, 40 plus years exploring these things and I've broken it down into a very concise way of, of setting this stuff up so that people can, can go there and they don't have to retraced all the steps that I do. So let's start with the feet heels together, toes apart. Okay, now this is a, a, a stance for a lot of young style Tai Chi forms. And it also is the way um, a lot of Xing Yi forms start. So it, uh, you wanna, wanna have this as an option. You wanna be able to do this. I know some people, prefer other ways of starting a form and that's perfectly fine. But you want to be able to go in all directions. You want to be able to feel it in each way. So feel the, so we start, we want to feel the balls of the feet. And by the ball of the foot, I mean the, I mean this part right here, right on the inside of the foot, the on the the arch there, and where the big knob before you get to the big toe. And so that's the point where you're going to locate that. You feel that. And excuse me if you've heard all this a thousand times before, but we're going to you know, doing this for, for people who might just be tuning in. And just feel, feel the ball of the foot. Now, you want the, the weight to be spread throughout the foot, but that ball is the bullseye. That's where you are directing your attention. You're organizing around that ball. And just notice that as you do that, when you settle your weight so that it's kind of over the ball of the foot a bit more, your heels start to not press down as much into, into the ground. And even though they're, you're still feeling contact with the floor, you're not, uh, you're not locked into the heels. And there's a lot of a lot of teachers, very reputable people who say, no, no, you really want to settle into the heels, and that's fine. That, that that's the way you want to do it. I know it's testable to show that you can, if you put on the balls of the feet, you're probably going to be ten times more rooted. So let's just uh, go there now. So feel that. 
and notice that just by doing that, you change your energy. Just by feeling into the balls of your feet. Next, you want to establish, so that establishes the earth pole, okay? By doing that, you open the bubbling well points at the, at the, the center of the, of, the, of the foot. And you're creating a structure there that allows the, the bubbling well to open, the kidney one point at the, on the acupuncture chart. Second thing is you want to do is you want to feel the crown of your head. So notice I'm not, I'm saying it's not the, not the top of your head. You're not feeling from here. It's actually back a little farther. So you're reaching up with the crown of your head. So if you feel where that, you know, that uh, the hair whirl is, that place where the parietal bones meet the occiput, there's a, a, a spot there, a fontanelle, that you is a soft spot in a baby's skull. And that is the place we're organizing around. So reaching up with the fontanelle, the posterior fontanelle. And when we do that, the chin comes in. So you open that jade pillow gate which is at the base of the skull. And you feel the balls of the feet. You feel reach with the crown of the head. The knees are unlocked. So you're allowing your body to settle down, sink into the earth. And relax your lower back so that your coccyx drops. You're reaching down with the coccyx, your tailbone. And there's a point there, an acupuncture point, on the, uh, an energy point called the Wei Lu. And you want to establish a separation, a poles in opposition between the Wei Lu and the crown of your head. So what that does is it lengthens the spine and opens the jade pillow gate. Opening the jade pillow gate allows for the energy to move up the spine into your head a lot more freely. It has a lot of, a lot of powerful effects, which we're not gonna get into right now. We've covered that in earlier sessions, but you can feel it right now as you do that. So you feel the balls of the feet, knees are unlocked, reach with the crown, tuck in the chin, open the jade pillow gate. Relax your lower back, allow your Wei Lu to drop. And you're feeling the spine lengthening. You're opening up. Jonathan and I were having a conversation today and you know, talking about how many people as they get older, they shrink. And I was pointing out that, that I've actually gotten taller. I'm much, I'm much taller now than I was in my 30s. And it's a direct result, I believe, from doing this work. That if you consciously lengthen your spine, you consciously create that opening between the vertebrae that you actually get measurably taller. For me, it's like, it's over an inch taller. So at 70, I'm taller than I was at 35. And I'm planning on keeping that going. The important thing here is to remember that regardless of whether you get taller or not, if you do this, you get more chi, more energy. So we're establishing our central equilibrium here. And it's something that's easy to forget as you go about your day but I encourage you to explore it a thousand times a day if you can. 
Just remember to get tall. Reach with your crown. If you do that, good things happen. Reach with, reach with your elbows. Round your arms a little bit here. Point and reach with your index fingers. And feel the chi in your hands as you do that. Keep rechecking that you're feeling your weight over the balls of your feet. You want to feel that central equilibrium. Now, one thing you may notice right now is if you're getting it correctly, getting it correct, there's a, uh, a sense of you're kind of floating. It feels weird. It feels not very stable. It feels like you're just kind of a, um, like a, um, a balloon floating in the air. And it's paradoxical because this is where you're at your most powerful, but it's the least substantial. So we have this, this substantial, insubstantial paradox going on here. And so learning to trust the insubstantiality is a huge part of this. And it has carryover in all aspects of your life. Learning to be able to go to this insubstantial place is, has dramatic effects in everything else you do. Because they, we have these primitive instincts to go and to want us to seek contraction as a way of protecting ourselves. And this is the opposite of that. He says, no, no, we're opening up. We're reaching. We're creating a system and a structure that allows us to access more. More life, more energy, more vitality, more health, more possibilities, more ability. We want to now just feel the hua, the hip joints, and want to open that just, just relax and sink, turn so that you allow yourself to sink down and, and release the qua. So this creates a, an opening there, which allows you to, the energy to flow north and south much more uh, efficiently. You're then able to ground the yang chi that's rattling around in your head. It allows it to go out through your feet and into the earth. It allows the yin chi, the yin supportive nurturing chi of the earth to rise and fill. And go out the top of your head. Do that, you become part of the big system. We're going to take this and we're going to now go to a different, slightly different. So you pick up your left foot, rotate, put your foot down so this point it's pointing straight forward. And then you feel the ball set the knee spiral down and you pivot on your right foot so that now both feet are parallel hip width. So this is another way to start a martial arts, an internal martial arts form. You'll see this in some forms of Tai Chi. You also see it in, in Bagua Zhang. Bhagavad we start with the feet parallel. So, but we want to find that central equilibrium here as well. Even though Bhagwa doesn't have the same emphasis on rooting that Taiji does or Shingi, it still 
demand central equilibrium, even though the postures in Bagua are quite um, extravagant, they, you still are looking for central equilibrium in each of those postures. So here again, we feel the balls of the feet. Knees are unlocked. Reach with the crown, tuck in the chin, open the jade pillow gate, relax the back, drop the way loo. Feel the separation, feel the poles in opposition between the way loo and the crown. Elbows up, fingers reaching, boom, boom, you're relaxing into your claw. And feel that as a starting point. We're exploring the center equilibrium here. So these are all static postures. And we're going to do some more static postures. But I want you to feel that. Now you're going to feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, and pivot on your left heel. Turn your foot out so it's on a 45. And I want you to just feel the central equilibrium in this. So even though this is a transitional posture, we're gonna be taking a step forward into a bow stance, but at no point do we want to not be in central equilibrium. Feel this, feel the, feel the chi. Why would you want to miss any moment of this? Now feel the ball of the left foot. Push your left knee out, set it over the ball of the foot. Just feel into that. Feel into the central equilibrium of this posture. Even though it's a transitional posture, we want to be in central equilibrium as we do this. Because there's really no place in a Tai Chi form where you should not be rooted, connected, feeling a whole body energetic connection. Every posture should be a have the potential for either de defensive or offensive expression. Whether or not you ever use it for such, knowing that as having that, that readiness there allows you to experience energies that you would not ordinarily. Now feel the ball of that left foot, set the left knee and spiral down to the left. So you're loading up into the left quad. You're releasing down. Central equilibrium again. You're reaching with the crown, you're reaching with the elbows, reaching with the fingers. Everything is reaching, we're expanding, we're opening. Pick up that left, the right heel. And just feel into that posture, feel the readiness of that posture and step forward, heel first, place the foot down. So the foot is, is ready to go. It's in this position, but there's only about 10% of your weight there. Most of the substantiality is still in your left leg. And you're feeling into the Central equilibrium there. Now feel the ball of the right foot. So you're establishing a connection there. At first, it's consciousness. You're consciously establishing a connection that leads to chi. The chief follows that. Push your right knee forward, 
until you feel it lined up in that sweet spot with your right leg. And do it without shifting your weight into that right leg. So you're pushing the knee forward, but you're not loading up the right leg yet. Your, le your left leg, your back leg is still the substantial leg. You just feel that. So now we're going to very slowly feel the ball that right, set the right knee, and you're going to spiral down into the right leg, into the right claw. And we're starting to very slowly load that up. So at no point do you leave central equilibrium as you're doing that. Very slowly do that, and you line up your body. So then now you have. The right leg has now become substantial. But we're not done yet. We're still maintaining that center of equilibrium. And we're going to turn the waist. Use your yao, your lower lumbar area your sacrum, your lower back really, and just use that to very slowly turn so that now you're square up. Your weight's about 70, 75% in that right leg. Thirty in the back. And you're finding your central equilibrium in this. You're releasing down into the quality, allowing that to settle down in, feeling the ball of the right foot. And by slowing this down like this, it enables you to see where you've gotten into habits, habits of movement, habits of standing that keep you out of central equilibrium. Notice that also that the amount of, of energy that's flowing through your system now is quite substantial. And it requires a certain degree of practice to be able to tolerate this much energy. But that's the fun of it. Now we're gonna to go to the back foot. We're gonna feel the ball of the, the left foot, feel this, Feel that we're starting to create that as a substantiality. And feel that connection. We set the left knee. Notice that my body didn't move much at all to set the left knee. It's really just a decision. It's the decision to say, empty out front leg, start to load up back leg. Now very slowly start to spiral down to the right, releasing the left quad. So you're loading up the left leg, you're spiraling down to the right. You're loading that up so that your left leg now has about 70% of the, of the load. Feel your center of equilibrium there, reach of the crown, reach of the elbows, reach of the fingers turn back to center. And feel your center equilibrium now. Feel the ball of the left foot. Set the left knee, spiral down to the left. You're loading up that left quad now, your left leg. Feel the center of equilibrium in this posture. You're loading that up. Pick up your right heel and step back with your right foot. Place the foot down, turn the foot out so it's on the 45. 
you're still loaded up in the front leg, the left leg. Feel the center of equilibrium here. Now feel the ball of the right foot, beginning the process of creating substantiality in the right leg. You set the right knee. It's unlocked, but you're setting it. You're saying, okay, right knee, right knee, you're not moving. And release the right cross spiraling down to the left. So you're starting to load up even more into that right quad. That right leg, feel that. Now we're going into a single weighted stance here. About 95% of your weight is in that right leg now. Your left foot. You want to be able to sink down so that you can pick up the left foot, put it down, pick it up, put it down, be able to really trust your right, your right leg to support you. Feel your center of equilibrium now. We're in a single weighted stance. You're standing with the right leg it is your substantial leg. Feel into that. Feel the central equilibrium. Now I want you to deliberately go out of central equilibrium and just feel what that, that feels like. Just kind of push your butt a little bit out to the right so you're feeling that jutting butt syndrome and just notice what happens whenever you do that. Notice the tension that is created in your body whenever you just push the, the hip out horizontally, even just a little bit. And do yourself a favor and return back. So you're feeling the substantia, the weight settling over the ball of your right foot. And notice how a lot of that just disappeared. Step back with your left foot, place it on the 45. Feel the ball of the left foot. Set the left knee. So you're lining up that left foot. Reach with the crown, reach with the elbows, reach with the fingers. Relax your way, Lou, and spiral down to the left. Keeping your center equilibrium as you do that. Pick up your right heel. Place, come on the toe of your right foot. You feel your center equilibrium in this posture. Feel the ball set the knee of your left leg. And step around so your right foot comes in front and turns out on a 45. Feel the ball of the right foot now. Set the right knee. Spiral down to the right. And if you do, you're loading up 
the right quad, re releasing the left so that now you're settling down into your right leg. And this is a very um, gentle dragon posture. You spiral down like this. You have a, this is a, a dragon posture in Xing Yi. So having that, so the left knee comes right inside the, the right knee. The weight is about 90% in the, in the right leg. Your left heel is up and you're maintaining central equilibrium in your, in your body as you do this. Step forward with the left foot, turn the foot out to the ball of the left foot, set the left knee, spiral down to the left and sink so that you're maintaining central equilibrium you have a dragon posture in the left leg now. So all this is, these are get, we're getting a little more exotic here, but it's primarily to, to demonstrate how we can find central equilibrium in all kinds of different places. Step up and go back to a neutral posture. Let's say shoulder width. And just feel into that. Empty out of all muscular tension and just allow the form, the structure to conduct the energy in as efficient a way as it possibly can. Feel the ball of the right foot, set the right knee, spiral down to the left. So I'm gonna load up, feel the central equilibrium in the right leg now. Step in with the left foot. And feel your center of equilibrium in this very neutral posture here. Take a deep breath. Inhale. As you exhale, disappear the chi. Throw it all away and dissolve into the emptiness. Allow yourself to dissolve the body, dissolve the energy and shift into a even more substantial state and energy. Let's see, please. How'd we do? Any questions, thoughts, complaints? I worked you a little hard there, but uh, uh, I, wanted you to, I wanted you to have a chance to compare Central equilibrium in all those different places. 
and actually is about that was about half of my list, but uh, uh, I felt that was that was that was enough to get the point across. Um, any any questions, thoughts, Scott? Um, <clears throat> I still I, I guess it just comes with learning, but I find that I have to constantly keep adjusting, dropping my way, Lou, adjusting forward or backwards. It seems to be constant. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, that is the game. That is the game because you you've got baggage. We all got baggage. And, you know, like I say, I've been at this for over 40 years. So, you know, I've worked out some of the kinks, but every day it's a new game for me. Every day I'm doing exactly what you're doing, which is, okay, what do I need today? What, you know, what adjustments do I need to make today? And that's, that's, that's the consternation, the joy and the endless curiosity that unfolds with this practice. It's like, oh boy, there's even more. I do not, I, I, I will never know it all. Valerie, mm -hmm. you had something. Well, I was going to say just what you said, that, that um, that's what keeps it fresh and new every time uh, and, and not boring because, you know, it's like, I don't know what to compare it with. Um, it's not like learning, uh, you know, a bunch of scales and the scales are always the same. It's not always the same. It's like, okay, you play a scale on one piano, it sounds this way and you play scales on another piano and there's, you know, it's got maybe a slightly different pitch. It's just always different. So there's always something to explore. Always. Um, yeah, yeah. I, 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 you know, I'm not as into it as I used to be. But be, but each one just standing it's like wow it's mind-boggling how much there is in what some people would determine as you're doing nothing <laughs> but there's so <laughs> much going on you know so much for you to to feel you know every all the time uh, you know my way my my biggest thing is um way Lu and always constantly you know because you pointed out you know i know you know you've got that jutting butt a little bit you know so it's like always getting that back in and feeling it because you're right lifetime of even 20 years you know say say you just spent your first 20 years standing in a posture that would not be beneficial to you you got that 20 years to work on you know right. and and that's the that to me that's the fun of it you know it's that, uh, what do you call it? That, uh, um, uh, the, the bitter, the bitter practice, you know, it's, uh, yeah. it's, it's fun. Great. <laughs> Thank you. Nick, you had something. Yeah. I was just thinking about this in a whole new way. In some ways, it's like, we talk about the forms and we use all these static words to describe what, is in fact, like Scott was saying, it's, it's a process. So we talk about a posture, but it's not a posture. Single whip is not a posture. Single whip is a process. Right? So, so. It's a conversation. It's yeah. A it's conversation. Yeah. You're, you're, yeah. you're having a conversation through your body with the world and, and energy and, and all these insubstantial things simultaneously. And what, part of the conversation you're able to tune into in that moment will color your experience of that moment. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Richard. Um, <clears throat> first, I'll say that I shouldn't be thinking about this now, but, <laughs> but I think what I'm thinking about that I shouldn't be thinking about is that when I watch you play the impossible, that there is no lost position game. What it's, it's always been very clear to me that the first thing you do is look for the center from which you move. 
is that does that resonate sure it's and now we're talking about the center of two people right so you know to just for to clarify what richard's talking about there is there you know there are no lost positions that it's a game that we play where where one person puts another person in an obviously compromised position where it seems more or less indefensible and you have to solve the puzzle. It's a, a way of investing in loss where you place yourself in a losing position and obviously a losing position and then say, okay, now figure out how, how to not lose from this position. And uh, so it, exactly what you're saying there, Richard, it's a, you find out those three pillars. So it's not just centric delivery, it's all three. It's, it's unkink the hose, it's, is get uh, coherent, it's center of equilibrium, find the center. And then, as you say, you've become the center for the system, which includes your partner in that system, and which is the fun of playing push hands, is being able to do that because it can change 10 times a second, you know, that, that, that dynamic so it's it's happening so fast and and it's quite glorious but we play with it in a slowed down way so that you can actually identify oh so that's the transition point there that's where we went from this to that and oh got it good cool thank you yes anybody else mm. stan yes Am I on? No, you're good. Oh. Now you're, 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 you were good. Okay, now you're good. Okay. No, I noticed that uh, for me, I had, a, I had quite a big struggle trying to maintain uh, central equilibrium throughout, but it is, I was slowly getting it, but I had to work really hard. At it. But at the time we went through the whole sequence for the last uh, posture, uh, just before uh, releasing everything, all of a sudden I felt like I actually was on the sweet spot. None of this, after all this workout with the legs and the sometimes even trembling, here now everything was just relaxed, like I really stepped into that sweet spot. Nice. And it was nice. It was Beautiful. nice. Thank you. Beautiful. <laughs> Good. Anybody else? Okay. Um, you can wrap it up. Okay, well, let me just uh, talk a moment about this. We got a few minutes to fill up here. So um, the conversation Jonathan and I are having where today, you know, today was, you know, how to how to do this throughout your day, because that's really what what matters here. Is it you know, this this conscious decision to do that as opposed to this? You know, and one of the things that you know, Jonathan famously did a thing at Taiji Alchemy where he was talking about how um, if you don't do it for any other reason, do it for vanity, <laughs> <laughs> because. As we get older, you know, and and this becomes our prevailing structure, it's not a pretty look. Yes. You know? <laughs> but it's how people they kind of shrink down into this tiny little little form that's, you know, as they get older. We don't have to do that. Mm. <laughs> we don't have to do that. So as Jonathan said. If you, for no other reason, do it for vanity. Do it because <laughs> this is a whole lot more fun than, than this. <laughs> it's a better look, folks. <laughs> it's a better look. And you want to, you know, you, you, you want to, when you walk into the room, you know, you, you don't want to say, who's that schlumptable guy over there? You know, you want to see, you know, oh, hey, there's, Somebody that uh, looks like they care, 
Nice. And he looks like they care about you know how they are relating to the world. And you know, if if for no other reason than just to have people think think well of you. <laughs> but even better is the fact that you actually feel better. It actually allows you to have access to quite miraculous powers mm -hmm. that are uh, gobs of fun to have. So why the hell not do that? So it's, yes. so each of these postures that we're, we were exploring today, and there are more more that we could have played with, but each of them allows us to explore that centric living. And it requires only that we give ourselves permission to stop there and say, yes, I'm going to slow this way the hell down. And I'm going to feel into this posture now. So even as I sit here now, you know, this is different than this. Oh, you know, definitely. And, you know, <laughs> and, and so you, if I do this, then it changes my relationship to you. And you relate to me differently than if I'm like, if I'm <laughs> like that. It's hard to even do it. It's hard to even watch myself do that. But that's, but that you you know what I'm talking about. So the uh, it, it affects the way we are in the world. It affects everything. It affects your mind. It allows you to shift into that super conscious state rather effortlessly which then opens up the doors of perception and allows for you to perceive the world as it is infinite. And that's fun in and of itself. So um, on that note, folks, <laughs> love you all and uh, see you next week. Bye-bye. Love you guys. Bye. Thanks, Thank Maria. You. Thank you, Maria. I love you guys. Yay. <laughs> Ha, <laughs> ha,